You're listening to Simple Roots Radio, episode number 180. And today we're redefining self care or just taking it back to its original definition and the first episode of the Inia Health Series. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is a place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. Today, I am pumped you are here because we are starting a new series called the Enneagram Health Series. Yes, this series is all about breaking down the Enneagram type by type and showing you how you can create nourishing life rhythms based on that specific personality. Now, I know when you talk about personalities, it seems like another box that I put you in. But bear with me, because the Enneagram is supposed to have the opposite effect of taking you out of the box. But I know, like everything, this can just be another standard or another norm that you feel like you have to fit within. That is not my intent at all with this Enneagram Health series, and I want to make that very clear up front. Because what I want from this series is for you to kind of understand your type and maybe your subtypes and to use the strengths within that type to help you create nourishing life rhythms. Because what I believe more than anything in health, it has to fit who we are. It has to just be a part of who we are, not something that we do, but a piece of us. And in that, It becomes a routine, our normal, our everyday life, and that is what true health is. Health is not some standard or some new diet or fad that's come on the market that we feel like we have to follow, that we have to give up living in order to do. That is not health. That's taking your health and effort to gain it, right? Like you're never going to find success there, and if you do, it won't be long-term or realistic. So I want to create something that lasts. And in order to do that, we have to make health who we are. And I think one key aspect is just knowing who you are at a deeper, more personal, intimate level to understand then what fills you up, what your body needs, living in the self-awareness to create change based on that. That is being healthy. And that's where I want to go with this Enya Health series. So I'm super pumped. But like I said, I want to break down the thought that I'm now boxing you in. I'm creating a subtype for you that you have to live within. That is not the case at all. Like you're going to find that you're going to be a little bit of more than one type of the Enneagram. For instance, I'm a type two, but I relate very strongly to a one and to a three. So I'm a little bit of everything. And I'm not to say that I'm just straight flat out of one. I don't think that there are very many people who are just consistently the same number over and over and over and all their characteristics fall within that. But I think that we're made up of a lot of different types, but there's going to be probably at least one strong type that you are and that you fall within. And I hope that the recommendations that I give you are not to box you in, but to give you ideas on how you can make this just a part of who you are, not just something you do. So like I said, that's the purpose of this whole series, to get out of this fix-it mindset and come inside and recognize, how can I just fill myself to make me more whole and to come back to the actual definition of self-care, which I'm going to define in here. And to your surprise, it's not bath bombs and massages and getting your nails done. No, no, no. I mean, that stuff's great, um, but that's more self-indulgence. And yes, we all love indulgence. I love the word just as much as you do. But that's not what self-care actually is. And we're going to dive into that on today's podcast before we start breaking down each specific Enneagram numbers. Okay, so just to lay the groundwork today, I'm just opening up the series talking about what is the Enneagram. In case you have no idea, that's perfectly fine. We're going to answer that question here. We're going to talk about the actual definition of self-care and why the Enneagram relates to that. And then I'm going to help give you advice on figuring out what your Enneagram number is and send you on your way to take a quiz and to learn more. If you want all those details, I have them all listed, resources, quizzes that you should take, and a little more information on this original definition of self-care over in the show notes, which can be found at simpleitswellness.com backslash 180. Also, each Enneagram type, I'm giving away a download to help you live the practical advice out that I'm going to give you for each specific type. So you can always find those downloads over in the show notes. That's always at simpleitswellness.com. 
Okay, but to lay the groundwork, today is just the opening show, and then next week, we're gonna break down each specific Enneagram type, starting with type one. I'm gonna do a show just on the lifestyle rhythms based on the Enneagram type one. So some eating patterns that maybe could be beneficial for a type one or that you could relate to, exercise regimens and total lifestyle changes that could be just the key that you need. Because what I see is a lot of people who are doing a lot of things and they question why they aren't working. And I question, maybe it's because it doesn't fit into your lifestyle. It's just not a system that works well for you. And uncovering some simple practical advice that maybe works for your personality type could spur you on to live a healthier life in general. That's the whole goal. So next week, I'm going to break down type one. And then in that same week, I'm also interviewing someone with that specific type to get more everyday practical advice on how they're living, their thought process, and what's working for them. So stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's nine types. So this is going to take up a majority of the fall before we get back into some more specific podcasts like fascia and setting new year goals and new intentions. Yes, I mean, when I write out the schedule, it's we're all the way there at the end of the year. But don't worry about that now because we're in this Enya Health series and I'm so pumped for this. I know the Enneagram is very popular, so I would love if you would share this podcast with other people. Take a quick screenshot, share it on social media, send it to an email and friends, tell them in passing. The more people you tell, the better off this show is. And I just thank you so much for your support and your guidance. So if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes, share this podcast and get them on board with this new Enya Health series. Also, Before we get into today's show and break down the Enneagram, we do have a sponsor for this series, and the sponsor is Juve. Now, Juve is a red light therapy-based system, and you've heard me talk a little bit about red light therapy here on the podcast. If you haven't listened to the episode, then you need to go back and do so, where we go in-depth behind the healing power of red light. But like I said, this podcast is brought to you by Juve. You've heard me talk about Juve before. I even interviewed the co-founder, Melissa Strahan, on episode number 148, where we dive headfirst into red light therapy and how beneficial it can be from the podcast. Since that show, though, red light therapy has become a part of my daily routine, and the research behind their benefit is incredible. Red light gets its benefit from the specific wavelength that acts in the body in various ways. On a cellular level... This has been shown to improve mitochondrial function and increase the production of ATP, basically energy. Like I said, this can bring about healing in a number of different ways, including more energy, quicker recovery, more vibrant, tighter skin, and so many other things. Combine the red light therapy with an infrared option that Juve also offers in each device, and it targets a much deeper level of cells. And honestly, I have noticed so many different benefits in just a few short months that I've been using my Juve. Everything from increased lymphatic movement, which you know from my mold illness and my C-section scars, lymphatic flow is really, really hard for me. It's also decreased my joint pain. I have healthier looking skin, shinier hair, as well as increased daily energy without the brain fog. I'm telling you, Juve has done the research and have a number of products that you can use anywhere, like the new Juve Go, which is handheld and much more affordable device that can be used to target treatment or pack in your suitcase, all the way up to the full body panels, which can be purchased separately and eventually grouped together over time because of their patented modular design. Red light therapy is just another tool to help foster natural healing and rejuvenation in the body using their state-of-the-art devices. To learn more about Juve and what they have to offer, head on over to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V.com backslash Simple Roots, and make sure to include Simple Roots at checkout for a special gift with your purchase. I seriously love my Juve. I've noticed so many things. Like I said, decreased bloating. It's almost like I've kind of deflated and lost some weight because of that and so many other things, which I'm going to get to throughout this series because they are the sponsor of the show. So make sure you check out Juve after the show. Okay, but for now, let's get back to redefining self-care, getting back to the original version, and why the Enneagram matters in all of this. Okay, so the Enneagram. I'm just going to be honest. The Enneagram probably looks like another personality test, and it definitely has those factors. But the difference between the Enneagram and other personality tests is that it goes much deeper. Like it helps us to see our core fears, motivations, desires, strengths, blind spots, stressors that most often trip us up. 
And then knowing this stuff, then you can see how beneficial this information can be in our health and creating healthy, lasting change that actually works based on who you are. So what I love about the Enneagram type is that it does a great job of psychoanalyzing human behavior to categorize people into certain types without actually boxing anyone into a stereotype or a box. Every type can always be applied differently to any specific individual. And for me, it's honestly just help with understanding how to love and help other people around me more accurately and abundantly and to to love myself more accurately and abundantly. So like I said, this is a little bit different than other personality types. And and I've done them, right? Like the Myers-Briggs, the Strength Finders. I've even learned about my emotional intelligence. And all of them have been useful in growing my self-awareness. But the most useful tool that I've found in growing me spiritually, relationally, emotionally, mentally, physically, and professionally has been the Enneagram. I just think it's the most in-depth and takes the deepest dive. So what exactly is the Enneagram before we get into how can this actually help you in health? Because I want to offer in this podcast, like I said, a different view of what self-care is. Because I think what we recognize about self-care is that it's needed. But unfortunately, what we see is not really self-care. It's more like self-indulgence. So we need to get back to self-care because that can change our self-indulgence because that's not wrong, but we have to channel in a direction that is actually good for us. So what is the Enneagram and how can it benefit you? Well, the Enneagram contains nine spaces or types with each number representing a dominant personality and a mindset. So each type also has a primary strength and a primary struggle and health and insecurity. Like I said, it's just going to kind of pinpoint your strengths and your weaknesses, your dominant personality and your mindset. Like it's going to take a deeper dive. The words of the Enneagram I also think are really beneficial because it's going to use the words like true self and false self. And the false self is going to be known to make known blind spots and how we kind of live out of this mask and how we can uncover our true self representing who we are and self-awareness and health and rooting our identity in Christ and living from a place of freedom, like in fully being who you were created to be. That's what the Enneagram can offer. It also helps make us aware of when we are living out of our true self, healthy and whole, as well as when we're living out of our unhealthy places and habits, which we're prone to depending on when we're stressed or afraid. So all of us are going to fit into the nine spaces. Now, when I first did this, like just to give you a little background, I was adamant that I was a three. I took some tests online and came back that I was a three and achiever. It kind of made sense, but the more I started reading books, the more I realized, no, that wasn't me at all. So then I kind of moved to a two and I took a paid test and and the two seems to fit really well. I still believe that my two is me. However, when I was doing the research for these podcasts coming up, I recognized that I really relate a lot to a one. So I don't know if I'm 50-50 between a one or a two and they'll often say that you have a number and then you have a wing, meaning that you have this base foundation, which is your number. So for me, like I'm probably a helper but I have a strong wing of a one, meaning that my personality is kind of birthed from those two things. I can go in either direction or just a combination of both of those. But like I said, all of us are gonna fit into one one of the nine spaces, but don't be alarmed that if it takes a while to discern which one is your dominant number. Like I said, it took me a while and reading and researching and talking to other people. I think when my sister and my husband started coming in and saying like, oh, that doesn't sound like you, but that does. That started helping me to recognize what really is me and what isn't. In addition to the individual number, like I said, we have numbers that have connections to each other. So you can have a wing, which is often another Enneagram number that you relate to. But we also go to, in each Enneagram, a place in health and a place in stress. So you can kind of see, okay, what happens when I'm not fostering health in my life? Then you can start to pinpoint these negative characteristics and know clearly and definitely whether you're living in a place of health or unhealth. And on the other hand, we can see, okay, these are times when I'm really living in health and this is what we can do to get ourselves there. But in addition to our wings and where we go in stress and health, the Enneagram has kind of been broken down into three different groups 
And each of these nine spaces create three triads that have distinct characteristics in themselves. And I'm just going to share those here with you to kind of spur you on to maybe give you an idea of a ballpark where you might fit. Ones, eights, and nines are what we call the gut triad. Twos, threes, and fours are the heart triad. Five, six, and sevens form the head triad. Now, I know that sounds like it means nothing, but hang with me. So the gut triad, again, the eight, nine, and one, they're often motivated by resistance. Like they're asking the question, what is wrong here? They like to focus their attention on their own opinions. They live with the perspective that life is a battle. They want control over people and circumstances. Their instinct response is always no. They move against people. They often have an underlying feeling of anger, and yet they seek autonomy. So that's the gut triad. And I look at that and I think, wow, that's really negative. But what's interesting about the Enneagram and finding your number is that I found that it wasn't the positive things that I related to. It was the negative things where I was in unhealth. Because what's fascinating about the Enneagram is that we all want to claim this beautiful perspective of who we are, this healthy perspective, and we like where all the Enneagrams are in health, and at some level, we can relate to that. So in health, like, we're just very relatable people. So I had a harder time, like, coming to understand myself when I was just looking up the healthy characteristics because I really loved all of them, and I thought they could all be me. But it was when we started looking at the weaknesses and and the deadly sins, that's where I was like, oh, okay. So I know this sounds negative, but sometimes the negative is where you're going to actually figure out who you are. Now, if we move on to the head triad, which is our five, six, and sevens, these people are motivated by strategies. They ask the question, how can I solve this? They often focus their attention through looking within to what they think. They live with the perspective that life is a problem, and they want to understand the issue to that. Their instinctive response is to think about it, and they often move away from people with the underlying feeling of fear, and so they seek security. So that's the head triad. So if you feel like you kind of have this underlying feeling of fear, um, you often think about things like you're a thinker, that's the head triad. That would be the five, five, six, and sevens. And the last one is the higher triad, which is the twos, threes, and fours. These people are motivated by image. What will others think? They focus their attention through looking out to what others want, and they live with perspective that life is a task. They want to fix problems, and their instinctive response is clearly to say yes. They move towards people, but they have underlying feelings of shame, and yet all they want is attention. So that's the heart triad. So again, we, we're going to dive into those a little bit more, but those kind of encompass more of these Enneagram types into three more characteristics that help you kind of start to understand, okay, I could be one of these. If you didn't follow that, I'm going to leave a little chart over in the show notes. So head on over there to grab that and more information about finding your Enneagram type and some books that I recommend. But the Enneagram is really, really, really powerful and beneficial, and that's why I'm doing a whole series on it, because I think that it can be really influential in creating healthy change that works for you, and that's what's so important. So how is this helpful in health? Honestly, I've just been so frustrated by what we've produced in the diet industry and the health industry, which is more standards and more standards and more standards and rules and (laughs) regulations and just all of these strict, rigid things that never take into account who the person is and what they were created for. And I think that we have to start looking at ourselves in order to create realistic and nourishing life rhythms. And that's what I believe the Enneagram can help us do. Is it the end all be all? Absolutely not. But it can lay a nice foundation to understand ourselves because I fully believe that as long as we're in conflict with our body and our personality, we will always lose. Like our body will always win. And I feel like we're just creating unrest and a lack of trust. And our body knows that. And that releases more stress hormones and it leads to conservation of body fat. Like there's just so many things that uh, that we aren't even taught that are happening inside of our body when we live in a place of unrest. So we need to get back to trust, into vibrancy, into joy, and relaxation, really, like resting in who we are and creating nourishing life rhythms from there. 
I recently heard a quote that kind of went along with this. It really hit home with me and it pushed me into this. The quote was, the antidote to exhaustion is not rest, it's wholeness. And I know Joanna Gaines like created this whole wholeness awareness thing that's going on, which is fantastic. But I wanted to dig into where does this idea of wholeness come in? Because I think what wholeness is trying to do is kind of take away this, again, unrest when it comes to balance and just looking at the whole of who we are and recognizing that as good, like as useful and purposeful and beneficial and in that we can look at that as good. That's wholeness. So wholeness, I think, really comes through self-awareness or self-care. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that I think we have a flawed view of what self-care is. Because technically, if you dig into the old research about self-care, this is not a new thing. It's completely different than the self-care that we're viewing today. So self-care today is often looked at bath bombs, getting your nails done, massage, binging Netflix on the couch, playing endless hours of video games, kind of distracting or numbing in some ways. I mean, not that's not the case every in every place. I think it's so healthy to do some of these practices and to take care of ourselves. But I think that we're missing it. And what we have now is not self-care. We have self-indulgence, which there's a place for that because I really fully believe that there's a place for pleasure in our life and that pleasure can drive us forward. But what technically true self-care is, is it's different than what we see today. Self-care is defined as an intentional process of self-examination. If we take that further, self-examination is the work at looking deeply at our lives and our own stories, knowing ourselves so we can know more deeply the intentional purpose of our lives. I really believe that self-care is simply soul care. And we just kind of package it into this external self-indulgence that are just external rewards. When really self-care is just knowing thyself, knowing the true self and releasing the false identity or your false self like the Enneagram talks about. So again, self-care begins with knowing yourself and then engaging in internal practices to care for your health, hearts, your soul, and to heal. So self-care is really the first step is knowing who you are. It's a mindset rather than the fix-it personality that self-care today has brought. So we have to know ourselves in order to know how can we help ourselves? How can we create wholeness with our with our bodies, with our hearts, with our emotions, with our soul? That's what self-care really is. And again, it starts with knowing yourself. You see, like self-care with bath bombs, it might be great, but it's more of the fix it mindset rather than the fill it. And I think we often run to self-care to fix our problems, to fix our emotions, to fix our void, to fix our exhaustion. But all these ideas, the self-indulgence that we look at self-care is not fixing anything. And I think people are getting frustrated because it's become a new bar that we have to set. I talked about this last week on the Body Positivity Podcast, and I think this greatly goes along with it, that We can't be fully confident in who we are if we don't know who we are. If we can't be fully confident in our false self, and I think that's where so much of the body positivity and body love movement have come from, is in the false self of who we are and trying to stand on that. But it's rocky and it's not going to hold you up, right? We can only do that by knowing our true self and living with that. And understanding those traits so you know your path of struggle and you know your path of happiness. Like you can be directed in that. And in doing that, we step away from this fix it mindset and we enter into the fill it mindset. Because our reality is, is that we can't fix ourselves. (laughs) As much as we want to, that is a damaging, hurtful thing. And what we're going to find in this series, in the Enneagram series, is the fix it mindset is always going to be a source of weakness in our bodies. And in order to move to strength, we have to take on practices that fill ourselves up. So what I mean by that, oftentimes when we sit down to watch Netflix and binge and get into a numbed mind space, what we're doing is we're really numbing or suppressing the problems. We're kind of trying to fix it by stepping away or distracting ourselves. Same thing goes when um, we emotionally eat, right? We're distracting ourselves or stuffing our emotions rather than filling ourselves up. Another mindset of fix it is to work out to think that that's going to reach a certain size. And then reaching a certain size, 
that's going to make you happier and more fulfilled and more satisfied and accomplished. But what we know is that never happens because we can't fix ourselves and fixing ourselves only brings us back to zero, back to nothing, no satisfaction. You might not be in deficit, which can be good, right? But you're still at nothing. Instead, we just need to work at a place of empty and fill ourselves back up. And we can fill ourselves in a lot of different ways. And the Enneagram helps to show us which ways we like to be filled. So some of us like to be filled with encouraging words, and some of us like to be filled by planning and organizing. Some of us like to be filled by spontaneous adventure. Like there are lots of ways to be filled. Some of us are really filled by Uh, saying hi and taking the compliment. Some of us are really filled by quality time. Like there are a lot of different ways to fill our cups, but we have to look at this as a means to fill rather than fix. And this is where the Enneagram is going to come alongside of you. And what I hope that you get out of this series is to build into a life rhythm that works for you. To create the intentional practices of true self-care That helps you to release your emotions, to live in freedom of your soul, and really just live in full health. So our goal is not to pursue over self-indulgence or not to go the opposite extreme and not have any self-indulgence, but it's ultimately to come inside to say, who are we really? And how can we live in our strengths rather than our weakness. And it's also knowing, okay, when am I living in unhealth? Like when am I letting my weaknesses get the best of me that kind of start to to create this unraveling? And I think that in this series, I hope at least that you'll start to recognize when you're not living so healthy and when that unhealth can lead to the unraveling, which can lead to the body pains and the physical problems that are associated with that. So it's a lot, but I think it's going to be so fun. So I just want to lay some expectations down for the coming podcast, and then I'm going to tell you how to learn about your Enneagram number. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down each Enneagram type and what the healthy version of that is, not just like the characteristics of that. Like we're going to go into the deep, here's how you should eat. Here's how you should move. Here's some lifestyle rhythms to focus on. Like we're going to dig into the actual physical health aspect of that, the lifestyle health, the wholeness of who you are, and really just kind of come up with some ways that you can start to fill your body. You can kind of suppress your weaknesses and live in that healthy version of yourself. So we're going to break that down in each episode. And then I'm going to interview some of my friends and friends that I've met online who are that specific Enneagram type. And we're just going to talk about what has worked well for them, how they recognize their strengths and their weaknesses, how they overcome these weaknesses and obstacles, and the encouragement to you if you are that Enneagram type. So it's going to be so fun. I'm so pumped for this. Now, even if you're not that specific Enneagram type, I think it's just as valuable to listen to all the episodes because you might be like me and learn that maybe you have a really strong wing that you didn't know about, or maybe you live with a different Enneagram number, like my husband's a three, and so it's valuable and beneficial for me to also learn about him and his instincts because then we can work more wholly together. So, Listen to them all. I encourage you, invite your friends to join this journey. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope that you have a blast. And most importantly, that you can kind of unmask that false self and really step into the true self of who you are for physical health, for mental, emotional health, and most importantly, for the soul health that really we need. So that's what we're going to do coming up. We're just going to break down each Enneagram type. And at the end of the series, we're going to interview an Enneagram expert to kind of get the final thoughts on this whole thing. So now the question is, do you know your Enneagram number? If you do not, and this is the first time you've been introduced to the Enneagram, you probably don't live in Nashville, um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So you want to find out your Enneagram type or your Enneagram number. So to do that, there are a lot of free online quizzes that you can take, which are great. However, I've heard that they aren't always as accurate as maybe a paid test. So the one that I took was the Ready Test, just R-H-E-T-I. Just type that into Google. 
find the ready test. I think it was about $12. And it comes out with like a whole printout of explanation of that type. So it's a pretty decent quiz. Comes out with a handout. Definitely worth it. Um, but then there are some books. So once you kind of have an idea of maybe what your type is and the wings, then I would pick up a book or do some research online. There's an Enneagram Institute.com or some books that you could check out at your library or Barnes and Noble or buy on Amazon, um, would be like the road back to you or, uh, the Enneagram, a Christian perspective. I'm going to link up a bunch of different resources over in the show notes to help you out with this. But start to dig in. And remember, the quiz isn't the end-all be-all. Like my story, I had to go back and kind of re-examine because not everything seemed to fit. And it probably won't. Like, you probably won't be a hard number. Although, I kind of think my husband is. I'm not really sure he has wings on his. Um, But, like for me, I feel like I'm I'm a pretty 50-50 split between a 2 and a 1. So kind of go back and learn about them and ask your friends and family specifically about the weaknesses. Like I heard someone say that um, if you don't like that you're that number, it's probably that accurate that you are that number. Because we often hear about the weaknesses in that and like they hit home and it kind of brings up like that true self in us um, and it's convicting. So dig into that. Take those tests look at the books and kind of start to understand your number. You don't fully have to know this. This is a total learning process. Like for me, I've kind of known about this for the last year or two. And um, my recently, like when I was doing this research, I learned like, hey, I'm a stronger one than I realized. And I started out as a three. Anyways, check out the show notes to get more resources and help in that area and, and take the test. The nine types are one, which could be considered the principled, purposeful, the reformer. Twos are generous, people-pleasing. They're classified as the helper. Threes are often adaptable, driven, excelling. They're known as the achiever. Fours are expressive, dramatic, known as the individualist. Fives are perceptive. They're innovative, and they're known as the investigator. Sixes are engaging. They're responsible. They're known as the loyalist. Sevens are spontaneous, they're versatile, they're classified as the entertainer. Eights are self-confident, they're decisive, they're willful, they're known as a challenger. And nine is receptive, reassuring, and they're called the peacemakers. So those are the nine types. Dig in and start to uncover who you are. Then come back next week because we're going to dig into type one. Like I said, we're going to break down type one specifically in health and creating nourishing rhythms that you can use in your life. And I have downloads for every single type. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And then every week, I'm also going to be interviewing a person with that specific Enneagram type talking about the real life day to day. How do they live in health and where do they have obstacles and hurdles that they have to overcome and the encouragement that they can give to you? So we're just going to have an open conversation about that. And I think in sharing real life examples, it will help you to live more true and free to who you are, like your true self. Like we can let go of the false self of you and live into the true self. So make sure to get all the information on this that you go back to the show notes at simperotswellness.com backslash 180. But my hope in this is that we can redefine self-care for you, which is ultimately soul care. And we can start to learn about yourself so that you can live in health rather than stress. So stay tuned for that. Check out the show notes and come back next week to learn more about Enneagram type one.